Hello everybody, this is Egg400, here with my newest Let's Play to do in place of Banjo-Kazooie. Um, as some of you who actually watch my channel may know, um, a Pokemon has won the, uh, the votes for being my starter Pokemon in Pokemon Black. Personally, I think you guys pulled that on me as a bit of a joke, which one it is, but... It's fully evolved form. It's really great, very strong, not to mention effective against virtually all but one of the Elite Four and like the gems and stuff. So it'll be really useful. Anyhow, please enjoy this intro sequence to my new Let's Play. Welcome to my Let's Play for Monster Rancher Evo. I'm sorry about all the screen glitches. Um, it's a, it's still the same camera. It's just not very good at taking in pictures from this TV. That and I think it's a little faulty. But this is Monster Rancher Evo, a very um, not very well known game um, by Tecmo and part of a. From what I know, a uh, five series long ga a five game long series on the P PlayStation systems. However, I believe there's a couple of Game Boy Advance versions, and I do have the DS, um, the latest one for the DS. But this is basically a game series that started around the same time as Pokemon, so it's basically a Pokemon clone of its own way. But I personally like this just as much as Pokemon. And I wish they wrote... The only thing I don't like about them is that they don't release the games nearly as much as Pokemon does. But, um... Monster Rancher is different from Pokemon in a lot of ways. Um, before I get started, though, I guess I should, uh... fully explain what's happening here. Um, the main character of the story is a orphan boy who was picked up by a circus. Yeah, yeah, weird stories. But, um, basically, um, you play this character whose dream has been to become a monster rancher, a monster breeder on a monster ranch. Instead, you're a monster breeder for a circus, but it's the closest thing you can get to your dream. Of course, I'm gonna call myself Zack. Um... This is explaining some of the prelude of the story, like how he was an orphan and what happened just before the start of the game. This 
as you're about to see, is a circus performance gone all wrong. That is a monster. Basically, the creatures you raise in this game, there are many types. That is a fan favorite and pretty much representative of the series like Pikachu. It's uh, Mochi. Um, monsters very basically are born from saucers or discs. Basically translated, you put a DVD or di PS2 game, no Blu-ray, into the PS2 system and it will make a monster based on that disc. Um, it very much varies, and the monsters that come out are extremely random. I mean, a disc will give you the same monster over and over, which is a great consistency, but... You know what, I think I'm gonna be quiet for the cutscenes. Sorry. Okay, this is a pre-rendered sequence that happens no matter what, and you always get the same monster. Um, this girl, Nayuda, is basically a very important character. What she does is she takes DVDs or um, PS2 games or even music CDs that you put into your PS2 and makes them into monsters based on what's on the disc. However, it will automatically, no matter what, create a Peroro. Very much the un um, new monster actually introduced in this um, file. This is this type of monster is known as a purebred. A purebred monster has a main species of one and the same subspecies as the main. It's possible to get subspecies by combining monsters once they've reached the end of their life cycle. One thing I do like about this game is that Pokemon... Eh, not Pokemon. Ugh, too many comparisons. One thing I like about this game is that, um... Monsters actually have a lifespan. And though they will not die in this game, at some point they'll stop gaining stats, stop leveling up, and will have a completely different, um, way of growing. Um... This game is actually very different from all the other Monster Rancher games for quite a few reasons as well. I'm not going to get into those, just letting you know now. But, um, basically a lot of people don't like this one because it's the black sheep of the series. Because it doesn't train the same way as all the others. That, and for a very long time until number four, which is the game before this, you could only race one monster at a time. You can raise one monster at a time again in the DS version, though. Even you, Mr. Pointy, excuse me? I think I'm going to start voicing the cutscenes from now on. It'll be better than me blathering, I'll say that much. Okay. This is a Peroro. They're basically like a combination between an acrobat, a really stretchy piece of taffy, and a clown. So... I think I'm going to name it, um, I don't know why, but I have the strange need to call it Jack. Let's just live with that for now. Um, normally in my playthroughs of this game, I don't keep my monsters. Oh, cutscene. Just a mo. What's the matter, Pointy? I mean, uh, I mean, Zig. Aren't you happy to have a new partner? You wouldn't understand. Not when you've got such amazing powers. Hmm? I'll never be able to do it. What? I can't understand how monsters feel. I could never raise him. I'll just end up hurting him like the others. Eh? Don't be stupid. If you start out talking like that, of course it'll never work out. There's another reason it never worked out. 
I wasn't in control during those other ones. Stop soaking and play your heart's voice on that instrument. My heart's voice? Everyone's hearts are filled with anima. People, monsters, everyone. Anima is a kind of mysterious life force that the people where I come from believe in. Actually, anima in this game is used to power up your monsters unlike previous games. Yeah, another reason why people don't like this. If you really want a variety, if you guys really like this, maybe I'll do Monster Hunter 4 or 3. I have both of them. But, um, until then, uh, let's just stick with this for a basic introduction. That instrument is special. It has special powers. God, I love that song. Or just the accordion in general. What have you got to lose? Just try and use it to communicate your anima. I almost said animal there. Aha! Jack seems to like it. What feeling did you send to him? Wow, did we automatically assume he's a dude? I thought monsters didn't have genders. Well, I just thought hard... I just thought how I wanted to work hard with him. He's a dude? Well, I guess the name says it all, but monsters aren't supposed to have genders. Oh, well. You win some, you lose some. Alright, for this first video, I'm gonna show the basics of raising a monster as we finally get in the first gameplay section. Today, Orko's... Orkoro Circus will once again be starting from square one. Just for Jack's sake, let's run through the circus practices one more time. Okay, basically how you train monsters is very simple. For now we only have we don't have access to anything called training gadgets. But um basically training is set up through the weekly meetings. You only have to do it once a month because um, of certain things. I'll explain it as it's required. But the first thing you want to do is go to information and look at your monster's personality. Mine is relaxed. Relaxed monsters like to have a po uh, um, policy that's better for them. Relaxed monsters like this prefer easier training. I like to go full lenient because that gets you the full effect. Um, right now there are no gadgets, but if you had a gadget, you could set them up with one. Gadgets are basically um, show tricks that they perform in a show, which is how they gain their stats. So this is very different from the other games because unlike the other games, the monsters actually gain their stats during a show, rather upon their training, which is something very different from all the other Monster Hunter games. Even so, I don't care. I like this game. Now, right off the bat, we get a mini quest from Marlene. Um, the item she asks for is random. It's just a level 1 item of some sort. In this case, she's asking me to get cake. Of course, she'll give you 500 gold to pay for it. Why we're exchanging so much gold for cake, I'll never know. I swear, that's always been a problem with games that I played. I mean, that much money, like all that gold that we gave to Blubber, that could have gotten us like 40 freaking jiggies. We could have beaten the game right there. But, let's face it, we have to do this. Um, over here is a saucer shop. Um, the saucer shop, in essence, sells saucers of monsters. Sometimes they'll have something rare, but normally they don't have anything extremely decent. But this is also a good chance to explain subbreeds. Huck Claw here is like our Peraro back at home, but it has a subspecies of something we haven't seen yet. But I'll get more into that as we get into monsters later on. Um, I think that... I'll show you where the store is real quick, and then I'll cut to delivering the cake. So, this is the store, and you can get anything you want here, at least at level 1. Oh shoot, is that my time? Um, I don't think I'm actually going to have enough time to cut this. So, I'm going to have to end this video off here. 
Um, thanks for watching the first episode of my Let's Play, and I'll talk to you later.